Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we'll have another go at finishing the XR311. Looking at what's left, I reckon we're going to get it to run by the end of the video. Okay, we pretty much finished the bottom half of the body in the last couple of videos. It's had a little bit of extra time to harden up, so it's now nice and solid. Right, we need to get the driver cut out and in position. Tammy will supply you with two heads, one with a helmet used in the XR311, and one with a rather stylish haircut, I think, for the cheetah. The body should just drop straight into the seat. If it's a bit awkward, now's the time to find the issue and fix it. I found the seat back needed a little bit of a tweak to let the body sit in a good position. The arms have flat faces for gluing and no predefined positions. To get them spot on, we'll need a steering wheel. It's just going to get dry fitted for now, no glue. I've got a feeling once it gets glued in, the driver's going to be next to impossible to remove. The face of the arms need a good couple of drops of Plasti Weld, give it a couple of seconds to start to soften the plastic and position it on the body. Quickly get it into the perfect position and grip it nice and firmly. It'll need a good 15 or 20 seconds to bond well enough that you can take the driver out and pop in a couple more drops around the join. When it's hardened up a bit, pop the driver and the wheel back in and attach the other arm. It'll need a bit of extra Plasti Weld just like the first one and of course the head will need to be attached. But first, paint! I've not gone super detailed on him, other than smoothing out the mould lines using the knife scraping method. He had a couple of plastic primer coats, a coat of the same Halfords green we used on the body, and a little bit of flesh and detail using Tamiya acrylics. To attach his head we're going to use a bit of 5 minute epoxy. It will allow for the uneven surface, filling up any small gaps, giving a nice strong bond. Strong enough for the head anyway. We'll only need a little bit around the base of where the neck goes. Pop the head on and use some blue tack or similar to keep it in position while it goes off. Next, once the head is solidly attached, we'll need to stick a little bit of servo tape on him where he meets the seat. It won't be enough to hold him in completely, but it will stop him from slipping out. The steering wheel needs a bit more 5 minute epoxy. We just need a couple of small spots in the hole in the dash. Now for the tricky bit. We need to get the driver in with the wheel, being careful not to double dip the steering column in the epoxy and get it where we don't really want it. With some care it will all go in, adjust the wheel and hold it in place with a blob of blue tack. When it's all got off, it's best to leave it an hour just to be safe, remove the blue tack and inspect. And well, he does look a little bit special, but when the roof and windscreen go on it will be just fine. And speaking of the windscreen and roof, they're next. The window panels are really rather nice, they fit in the apertures in the surround perfectly. It's tempting to glue them in with a bit of Sino, but keeping the edges nice and clean would be next to impossible. Instead, I think the fit's good enough that just sticking the surround together will keep them all in place perfectly well. I've already painted it, the same plastic primer and Halfords Green used everywhere else, but being fairly careful not to get too much paint on the mating surfaces. I'm going to bond the post together first, and then work along the bottom. I used a couple of clothes pegs to hold it all together while it hardened, then went around the rest of the edges with more Plasti Weld and pegs. When that lot hardened fully, I took the pegs off, so we now have a rather solid windscreen ready to fit. There's a bit of visible seam around the edge, but I think that's a fair trade-off to be sure the windows have perfect edges and no paint bleeding. The roof fits with two screws at the back. At the front it uses a thin strip of servo tape. We only need just enough to roughly fill the slot moulded into the underside of the roof. The two screws are nice little countersunk self-tappers in black. Nice to see that they thought about it and didn't just provide silver ones. Fit all the bits but don't remove the backing from the servo tape so we can check it all lines up. There's no reason to suspect it won't but it will be easier to fix now than after it's all glued together. This one fits lovely so we can make it permanent. The windscreen needs to get glued to the body, and there's some fairly large gaps around the post so we can't just use the Plasti Weld. Good old epoxy is good at covering gaps, and I reckon 5 minutes will give us just enough pot life that we can get it all back together. Put a blob into the two holes for the windscreen, and quickly fit the windscreen before it all runs down the inside of the body. Peel the backing off the servo tape, and fit the two screws loosely. Get the windscreen in position on the roof, and make sure it's stuck to the servo tape. Do up the two screws the rest of the way, and double check to make sure it's all nicely aligned. Now we need to leave it to go off. There's really nothing like 5 minute epoxy to make things interesting to put together. Here's the complete front bumper. I've opened up the lower light slots and fitted four LEDs. Two for the blinkers and two side lights. The bumper gets stuck to the lip on the front of the body. 
and for a more solid bond we need to scrape off the paint to get down to the bare plastic. First though, a few bits of the body need a coat of black paint. And there we go. Right, headlights next. I've cut some slots into the side of the mounting holes for the wiring. The headlights themselves have a large white LED fitted. The mounting posts are drilled with a 0.8mm bit and it's wired with some fine bifler wire, usually used for winding bifler coils. It works pretty well when the space is tight in lighting installs. I'm going to use a tiny bit of 5 minute epoxy to stick them in. I would use Plasti Weld, but I'm not sure what it will do to the insulation on the wire. The epoxy will give us that little bit extra time to get the position spot on too. The windscreen wipers need to get stuck down with a bit more epoxy. The fuel cans on the back need to get stuck on too. I drilled the mounting holes all the way through, so all we need to do is put a drop of Plasti Weld on each one. The headlight hoops can get stuck on with more Plasti Weld. The modified rear lights can just drop in. They're not the best fit, so we'll use a bit more epoxy so we can take up the gaps. Back at the front, I've popped in the headlight lenses. They're just a press fit, so there's not really much to show. All that remains are the side mirrors. I've painted them in the same old green paint and silvered up the mirror surfaces. They've got a bit of bent metal for mounting, and they just press in, and they get mounted to the body. They look pretty neat, but the first branch they come across will have them off, never to be seen again. So I think there's not too much point in fitting them. That does, of course, mean the body is completely complete. It took a while, but I think it was worth all the extra effort. The body fits to the chassis by sliding the brass bits we mounted at the back into slots above the motor. Push the body back until it pops into place. Flip the chassis over and latch the front body mount. It's extremely positive. The body really isn't going to go anywhere. Back on its wheels again, and we have a little problem. With the extra weight, the suspension is pretty much bottomed out. Just like we did before, we need to remove the plastic bottom panel with its three screws and adjust the preload on the torsion bars. We need quite a bit more than before, making it a bit tricky to keep a good grip of the adjusters. I managed it with the pliers, but it did chew up the plastic a bit. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do it, I just haven't found it yet. Anyway, when it just about holds its own weight with just a little bit of sag, refit the bottom panel. I took the plastic film off too, as even after a couple of quick runs with just the chassis, it was looking a bit frayed. Well, there we go then. Complete. There's a few mould lines here and there, but this is hopefully going to be a runner and not a shelf queen, so it's probably going to get a bit dinged up anyway. There's still the LEDs to wire up to a controller, the front bumper to do something with, and the steering to tighten up. But it's a runner. See, it runs. Okay, so it's only in a car park, but it's running pretty well. The extra weight and low grip tyres mean it'll happily spin its wheels if you're not gentle at accelerating. I reckon off-road it's going to be a bit of a handful, and quite possibly require a tow here and there. I think the front metal skid might end up being a mounting point for a towing eye. It should be roughly the same scale as the Cross RC MC8, so they'll probably end up being trail buddies. The MC8 being very good at towing with its 8 wheel drive. Should be fun. Right then, well that's it for this week. As always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, and of course don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Bye guys!